there's some greenery here then, which I could just plant on with the green that I've got. There's hooker's green and yellow on the palette there, which um, makes a very much, sorry, my face is right in front of the camera. I would have turned around the other way. Anyway, it's okay. Um, I'm talking about the hooker's green and the yellow, but it's made a very bright green, which you don't want because it's actually significantly darker than that there. So I'll just put some um, brown and blue mix into into that, make it darker. I generally use ultramarine blue and Van Dyke brown to make those dark mixes. Um, and I like using a rag or a kitchen paper to redefine stuff at the edge. So for example, that vegetation there with a damp cloth, I'm going to create an edge that feels a little bit more natural there on that. And I might just use um, the same cloth with some brown and blue mix on it in order to define some sort of thing for the roof. No, I think it needs to be a different. Maybe the cloth I used with the Indian ink on it would be better for those roofs. I think really just you can get away with a lot in a harbour like because there'll be all sorts of things going on, cranes and every kind of storage boxes and stuff in the background. So you really just want to insinuate that and to try your best not to get too hooked into doing anything in great detail. Mm -hmm. You see now. I had to squeeze and fling at the same time. <laughs> okay. All right, so. Hmm. Yeah, and now I think I'll finish off with some chalk pastel. Seems to adhere quite well to the acrylic layer, and I can see that the sky behind the cabin here is brighter than the cabin. The sky here is significantly brighter. I should really just use white up there, probably. The cabin is brighter than the background there. Um, just defining a little bit more some of these edges. and earning just on the side of it being recognisable in a kind of a good way. Sometimes it doesn't work out that it's in a good way and it's kind of recognisable in a poor way, you know. And just hope for the best each time, really. This is oil pastel now that I'm using to d do some of these straight lines and things. And this really could do with being more dominant. This uh, mast with the cross on it there. And then there's something written here. There's the name of the boat written on there. Which I would like to define too. And to maybe create my own name. That's my painting. After all, I can create whatever name I want, I suppose. Kind of exciting, and then down the front section, there's a couple of really light bits. Okay. I 
turned it on its side and the paper wasn't even off this oil pastel so it wasn't making any difference at all so what I wanted to do was bring some white clouds in there there's a lovely brightness to the sky there which allows the mast to be defined a bit more clearly and there to be some more semblance of a sky happening maybe 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 not and this thing could be defined too with the sky couldn't it just given a little bit more order I'm gonna use another oil pastel this one is a bit brighter and if I mix that with the white I think it'll read a sky color too feel like putting um I'm sure I suppose I might as well again seeing as it's my boat um putting an, uh, a life buoy like on this one I could put a nice orange life buoy on the front of that one couldn't I even although it's not in the water is that is that something boats have even when they're on dry land I wonder I guess someone could have left it on there anyway um grey this to me still needs to be knocked back a little bit, the edge of that. So that it goes around the back a bit more. I feel like in any case I'm going to bring in some crimson or something bright in a few spots. Whether or not it's going to be the boy. Just some brightness here and there. And there's some sort of thing there, not that bright, but I'm making it that bright because I want to. Over here as well, we could create some more bright things. I'd say this is very annoying listening to this trailing cord, so I'm going to tuck it into my apron. Give you a bit of peace for the last few minutes. And um, I thought as I put that colour there, that I might bring some of it down here too. Let something more happen in this section of the ground. I don't know, can you see it all there? Okay, and after doing that, then what I can do maybe is to use a nice clean brush, a bit of Van Dyke brown. I've got a massive clean brush here, a bit of Van Dyke brown on it. I'll just see what that looks like even on its own. And it'll resist the oil pastel a bit. I might change the oil pastel colour slightly there as well because it's um, the same as the boat above it. And so I'll we'll bring in something different, the yellow ochre. You could see it's almost like a silvery blue that's here. It's not quite silvery blue oil pastel, but it's okay to define the edge of the wall. I think that's there. And then I want to do something with a different tone to describe the edge of that, the front edge of that boat where it's a little bit brighter again here. Let it spill off around. This is a dark indigo coloured chalk pastel. I think people call them soft pastels. I know they all mixed up with my names for things. I know what I mean anyway, sure. I'm quite liking the dark clarity of this. 
and the fact that it only works in some places. Didn't really want it to be so clear there though, given that I'm not sure what shape that boat is. I say that's a bit bright. But I could use it over here with this other boat, make it easier. You know, there's a blue netting running along there. Just slightly flashing into the light. More sky. Put some white on it to lighten it a bit. of everything isn't it this painting I thought it was going to be a painting it's not a painting is it really it's a bit of everything and um, I suppose do you know I'm kind of oh, alright with that too I find myself apologising for the way that I work quite a lot um, because I feel sometimes like I want to do something that's just like um, simple you know start to finish this is how it's done there's some part of me that quite likes the structure of that and there's room for that too, but maybe not on a day like today when I just needed to just be a bit freer in myself and let it um, let it unfold. This is all gone a bit weird. Uh, when I needed to just let it um, unfold a little bit more freely. Yeah, I think I'm going to stop there. Um, and yeah, it's all right. Okay, so all the very best. I'll send an email to the to those of you who who are on the course, and I'll put a picture that I worked from into the email. Um, there could be some taming down at some point, and just using oil paint, say from start to finish. But at the moment, this was what I was drawn to do, and um, and that would it would be generally what I'd encourage you to do is to to go with whatever material feels that it's pulling you because we all have our own favorites and we all have our own way of letting the painting unfold and I suppose the key thing really is to allow and to um, to recognize um, if you're slipping into boredom or making it look a certain way and do your best to pull back from that and take a chance that's what I'd suggest so thanks for staying the course if you did. It's very long. And uh, sorry again for the burping halfway through. I'm going to pr bring the picture over a bit closer so you can see what happened. Um, see a bit, bit more the method maybe in the madness. That's a wonky boat. Hardly looks like a boat really. No one on the other side. And the kind of roofs and vegetation above that. Okay. So there we have it. Um, I was going to show you the photos, though, but I won't. Look at what's behind me there. <laughs> I'll send a few other f f photos um, onto the Facebook page, like I said. Okay. Thanks for watching. This is Anya Divine here saying goodbye with very dirty hands. Off to eat my chocolate. Have a lovely evening. All right, all the best.